Hi, my name is Diana, and I'm trying to um, provide some commentary on why I am God's Messiah. And in order for an individual to really examine whether I am truly the Messiah, um, you, you need to listen to the full extent of the stories that, um, that took place in my life that seemed to be planned out ahead of time where I was being used by God to be an answer to someone's prayer. Um, that doesn't mean that I consciously was aware of being um, a Messiah. I might have known like this is a thing to do, but usually it, it it's not just about being nice or about um, you know doing uh, charity work or showing up to a soup kitchen or you know arranging for some type of um, uh, charitable donations to help people in need. That's not what a real Messiah chosen by God would represent. That's not me. Um, a Messiah by God is someone who would help them, a person get up, gain confidence um, that God loves them too, um, without needing religious leaders. Most of the time, religious leaders um, and religion and religious people get in the way of, um, that's why Jesus, you know, he hung out with all the outcasts, right? And you don't see that uh, today. Most uh, religious leaders, um, they associate with people who are respected. Um, you know, sometimes they don't. There are good people out there, but they're not able to... Uh, I don't see them getting um, really uh, standing up against religious leaders who are causing some of the problems, right? Okay, so now I've got a situation um, that can be verified to be true where I was a Messiah. This situation takes place in 1991 at the Oakland airport. Um, I'm working as a rental, um, you know, as a manager at a car rental company that does a very different type of um, of business, it's insurance replacement, and at the that time, enterprise wasn't really as well known um, back then. And I was I worked at enterprise in Berkeley at Shattuck and Ashby, and I got I became aware of a situation through my boyfriend's friend who had a sister who was an attorney, and um, this situation um, took place uh, through. The, the larger car rental companies at the Oakland airport where some of the reps didn't feel empowered to call the police. And my boyfriend, at, who is now my husband, at the time said, that's ridiculous. My girlfriend works at a car rental company and she calls the police all the time. And uh, since it was a lesser company, um, he didn't believe that I had, first he didn't believe I worked at this company and then he didn't believe that um, I felt empowered to call the police um, on customers. Um, and that was the thing. Uh, the reps, uh, the union reps, were told by managers that they could not call the police on customers, business customers. And there was a situation where um, a business customer found a very attractive rep, attractive, and he asked if she would come back to his hotel room. And she said, politely said, no, um, she wouldn't do that. You know, that solicitation, he said he would make it work, worth her while, he would pay her. Um, she still said no. So what ended up happening was that the business customer went out to um, the car lot and he saw a group of um, hikers who were kind of rough um, and who were known to be gang members. And he told them the situation that he really desired this rep to come back to his hotel room and if he, they could convince him, 
her to come back, he would make it not only worth her while, but he would make it worth all of their time too. He would pay them too to bring her back to his hotel room. And so they came in to, you know, um, the counter and tried to lure her, tried to get her to come with them um, while, you know, uh, uh, to go back to for a quickie, I guess. And she didn't want to go. And there were three very large black men who were telling her to do this. Um, long story about that, and I would have to talk for about an hour to explain all the details of this huge union battle that took place. She said no, she said a prayer, and then just like that, abracadabra, um, the old older hiker um, who was the lead hiker was in his 70s. He came in and told him to get lost, and they had to call. Then they called um, the city manager, and she filed a grievance against the company for solicitation of prostitution. Um, and guess what? She lost. She lost the uh, union battle, and they were allowed to keep their jobs. I can tell you more about that and about the reasons, but I'm just going to um, skip by that. So I hear about this later. I'm working in Berkeley, and this situation that happened happened in Oakland. Um, so maybe about. 20 minutes away. And after these men um, won the union battle, and they didn't get, it, they couldn't even write them up for anything. They claimed it was discrimination. They denied it. They said, no, it didn't happen. And she was just being racist. And my boyfriend's friend who had the sister who was an attorney was um, biracial and she she did believe the woman she she believed that she was telling the truth but there was nothing they could do and they couldn't they didn't the managers and the um, the reps did not feel empowered um, by senior management to call the police on someone like the customer and that's what she was supposed to do was call the police because if she did, he could just deny it, just like, and say she was just mistaken. I was just joking, you know, stuff like that. And then what they would do, these business customers would do, would call, they would call the CEO and complain about the service. And then it would get, you know, passed down and down, and then she would get written up. And if they called the police, and this was a high-ranked um, customer with uh, a, power, a, a, a big company that supplied a lot of business for the, com the company that I would be working for, um, they, they, they kind of ruled. And um, that whole idea, the customer is always right, came, was always brought up. Um, so... When my boyfriend said, well, my, my girlfriend, Diana, she calls the police all the time, he didn't believe. So that I, I felt empowered to call the police on customers. And I, so they called me and I said, um, I said, yes, I do. Yes, I call the police. When it's necessary, I do call the police. <laughs> um, but we were in a very different type of business. And I had to get my black car washer to testify that I do call the police because I called the police. <laughs> it, it, it was it's a long story, but he 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 said yes. She, Diana does call the police. She, she's she, he he described me as Diana gets is gets gangster on even the worst gangster. Um, he goes I don't and there's nothing that they can do. Um, so. Um, he, he believed me. And so then what happened after that was that um, my husband's friend, who had the sister, wanted to meet me and find out if I could, you know, offer any type of 
you know, words of wisdom um, to the city manager, who now was dealing with um, a complete rebellion of employees. None of, according to um, his sources and my source, you know, he said that uh, there were death threats, there were rapes in the employee parking lot. Um, yes, that can be verified. Um, uh, there were uh, uh, slowdowns of work. Um, you know, uh, they, no one would cut, no managers would transfer in or even accept the job when they had so many problems uh, that were, uh, where the, un uh, that, uh, these employees, the male employees were reacting um, with revenge against the female reps for filing the grievance against them. Um, and the managers um, set, made a policy that no, no one could go to the counters without their approval. Um, and if they were seen at the counters, they could be terminated instantly, no questions asked. So this, uh, <laughs> um, and the managers had a closed door, locked door policy because they didn't want um, that another manager at that time testified that these guys were, were bad and they came into her office and intimidated her at night and she was about ready to call the police on them but then they left after she told them to go, you know, to leave. So um, that was a, you know, a tricky situation. So um, he wanted to know what would I do and you know, I said, I don't know. I'd have to know that, like, if, if they weren't doing their job, you'd have to confront them and if, tell them that they were, you need to get to work um, and do what I, you know, do the job that you're paid to do. And if you don't, you're insubordinate and I'll write you up and send you home pending an investigation. The problem with confronting these men was that there was usually one white manager on duty and she was female um, all by herself and with every union category the um, of employees hated managers they wouldn't stick their neck out the, the car washers had a personal policy where they would not talk to managers unless they had to <laughs> There was no no idle chit chat, no you know shooting the breeze, no how are you doing, none of that, no hi, how are you, you know. Um, I, I was appalled. I couldn't believe that the managers um, didn't know their employees' names. I was also um, when I went when I you know so I didn't know all this when I was meeting with. Um, the man um, who had some compassion. He wanted to know what they should do. And I said something to the effect of, well, I could always send a resume and to the city manager and just get an interview and then discuss the problem, bring up these problems and, sh and find out more details from the city manager, who was female, by the way, um, and find out, and, and I could tell her what I would do in this situation. So in, in order to really be, you know, quote unquote, God's Messiah, you would have to have um, some training um, uh, that wasn't, uh, you know, uh, an education in a classroom type setting. Um, you would have to know a lot about the culture and the community and you wouldn't of the people who were black um, who were causing a lot of problems there were a lot of people who weren't causing problems too and so you would have to be able to identify the difference the different people um, by race I mean who were all black who were all being judged the same they were all um, you know, there were like seven, six or seven, six white managers. And most of their employees were, had, were 
had a different ethnicity of what some were white most of them were black or um, Hispanic or some were Asian blah 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 but you would have the ones who were causing the problems um, by far were black and you know and they were part of gangs um, that was the rumor they were using the cars to transport drugs that were being flown in <laughs> you know brought in from Mexico um, that was the rumor um, and it, you know these rumors they couldn't catch them because no none of the employees would turn them in um, they didn't trust managers to, uh, you know, like, let's say they said something. Um, <laughs> they could end up being threatened in their own community by a friend of one of their, the people they turned in. Um, there were a lot, they used fear tactics that, and these fear tactics are similar to what Nazi people, you know, Nazis and mafia, would use against um, anyone who who talked. So um, for me, it, and, you know, I'm a small woman, um, but I was the right person. How? You know, well, I I had a lot of friends um, who were black um, when I was younger, um, and I used to skate um, at a roller rink um, where I encountered a lot of people um, who were from, uh, they had um, a lot of problems um, social because of not just being black, but because of discrimination. Um, so I learned quickly, I, I, when I went to this roller rink, I was hated just, you know, and I knew, and I was used to being hated, you know, be, just because of the color of my skin or because I looked like I was rich, or I looked like I was privileged. Um, so there was a lot of, you know, I, and even when I worked in Berkeley, I um, knew all the homeless people who, by name, who camped out around my office. I wasn't intimidated by them. Um, and I actually helped like mentor a few of them and they got off the street. Isn't that a miracle? But those are long stories. So I found out, so long story short is I end up quitting the job um, in Berkeley because it wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't going the way I thought. And so I applied to the car rental company and it took a while, I ended up um, the, the city manager of Oakland never responded to my, um, my resume, you know, my, never, never said anything, but the city manager to San Francisco SFO, she called me and then I got in and I, I talked to her. She offered me a job right away and I told her, I'm not really interested in driving, you know, an extra 45 minutes across the Bay um, Bridge. So I wanted, I said I was interested in Oakland. Um, and so she said, oh, you don't want to go there. <laughs> it, she really did. She said that. It, they've got tons of problems. Um, and I was very qualified. I had a lot of experience. I had a, a degree from Purdue. And um, she thought that I would be better with working for her and I said I I get it but um, I probably should work for Oakland if they have more problems um, and you know she didn't think that someone like me could solve these problems but I did I came and no one really understands how I did um, so I started at the very end of May and by the 4th of July, I remembered they were all, 
they had been fired. I had called 911 and they, they were arrested. <laughs> ha ha, yeah. Now, at, now, that's just one thing. I found out that um, one of the women who was a witness to the woman who was being harassed um, had said a prayer because she was lived in their, the, the harasser's neighborhood, um, the gang members. And because she did, and because she claimed that she never heard, she didn't overhear what they were saying to the woman who was being propositioned into pro prostitution. Um, uh, you know, and even almost ab abducted. She, that's, she was terrified. Um, and all the women were. And so once, when they lost that union battle, um, in the, the women at um, the counters took it all out on one person who was at the counter that night. There were only two women at the counter. The woman who was being abducted, who was white, and then there was a black woman who lived in the neighborhood, the same neighborhood as these gang members or employees who were um, trying to um, solicit her into prostitution. And because she lived in their neighborhood and because she wouldn't testify against them and tell, um, say that what, that she, they, she overheard them um, she, she was getting, she was getting hatred from every, every, all the women and, um, like the silent treatment, uh, I found out later there was a few people who called her the N word. Um, they, even the managers like distrusted her and she was a single mother who had a son. Um, yes, she lived in their neighborhood. Um, that didn't mean that she was equally bad, um, and she, she, but she, it, she, you know, she was a victim just by association and by a zip code and by a neighborhood association. Um, she said a prayer, um, asking God not so she wanted to keep her job because managers could find. Um, if, if you made a single mistake on the rental contract, you could be written up. If you were, you know, it would be if, if you were, um, had too many cu customer complaints against your service, you could be written up. So she was worried that she would lose her job and she had needed medical benefits to provide to her son, for her son. Her, she had a two-year-old son. She didn't have a man. Uh, their father, she didn't even know the father's name. Um, she had no support from him. Uh, she uh, lived with her mother. Um, and that's it. Um, so she said a prayer and she told me about, uh, it was uh, on the very first day, or I think it was the second day I met her. She said that um, she believed God sent me to answer her prayer. Now, you have to ask why, right? You need to know. So if you think I'm making it all up, then make it all up. Tell me, tell me, fill in the blanks. Tell me exactly what happened that a woman who distrusted all white people, literally all white people, all, and hated, had every justification of hating managers. I want you to make it up, make up this story and tell me why this woman would tell me on the second day we met that she believed God sent me to was an answer to her prayer. If you can do that, I'll be interested to hear what you have to say. Because we weren't allowed to bring up God or religion at Hertz, and that's where it worked, Hertz. The women had a saying, it hurts to work at Hertz. So if you brought up any type of religion, they could file 
a grievance against you. And they did. They filed a grievance against another manager who invited um, some of the, the black hikers who were Christian to her, her church so the pastor could talk to them about cooperating more with managers. And they filed a grievance. So I wasn't allowed to do that. I, I, I was told the very first day, do not bring up religion, do not do this, do not do that. You know, you can't even breathe religion. So how, you've got to really ask yourself, what could I have said to her, to this woman who said a prayer begging God to answer her prayer and not take out, let any her sin of having premarital sex on her son. She needed that job to, to provide medical benefits and to provide a decent life for her son. What would I have said to her given the fact that I couldn't bring up religion or God? She brought it up. Uh, I, I, I was, uh, the another rep called me because she was crying, crying tears when I wanted to meet her. She was afraid that, uh, that if, because she heard I was smart and well-connected, um, she heard I called the FBI. I did, I have a brother-in-law who was an FBI uh -huh. agent, but, um, she was terrified and she didn't want to meet me. So Peter um, called me and said, please, please, she, I, she is terrified. <laughs> and he told her that, he, he tried to tell her she might not be that bad. I know you have every right to not expect much of managers, but she's a little smarter than the average manager. So. What I really want to know from anyone who watches this video is what do you think I said to her, given that I couldn't bring up God or any religion because of, you know, the rules that we had at, in management, um, you know, when I supervised a, a union employee within union rights to be atheist if they wanted. But she had faith in God and she told me that she believed God answered her prayer through me. What did I say to her?